All right, with so much discussion taking place about the exact state of how the economy is, we've heard some of the critics, we heard the Prime Minister coming out with an impassioned speech. Who better to caught up, catch up with than the man who's looked after power and renewable energy, now railways, but I will still call you one of the economic czars you know, of this entire all. government. But certainly somebody who knows the condition that the economy is. So let me just start. We're hearing two very radically different views. One view saying that the economy is not doing that well, it's slowing down. We've seen strong criticism from Yashwan Sena, Arun Shori and others. Prime Minister saying it's a temporary blip, it's going to turn around. Which is... Very how clearly we... the economy is in very good shape. We've transitioned into a post-GST era. It's probably the biggest transformation that India or any country in the world has ever embarked upon. Can you imagine a country of a billion people Changing the entire way the tax structure works, 17 taxes, 23 cesses, merged into one, a new software, new way of preparing yourself for taxes. And during that transition period, one had imagined, as you learn the ropes of the new technology, the new taxation system, uh, Finance Minister Jet Saab, Honorable Prime Minister, all have been saying that we'll have to go through this transition period. So the are, the back nation back. is happy that we finally made something happen which the whole world was talking about. So the fact that GST was a reform was something everyone was pushing for. So not that anybody said that GST shouldn't happen. I guess the questions have come A, on whether the implementation could have been done better and B, the bigger question of the two shocks in rapid succession. Demonetization followed a few months later by GST, which is what some people say has left the economy tottering a little bit. Two big shocks First like this. First of all, this. regarding the implementation, the implementation has been prepared by a GST council where we've had voices from all the states and the center working together in tandem. It's a joint effort where everybody has had his, their own challenges. They've had their own concerns about to make sure that the system is robust, the system captures all the transactions. It does not allow evasion of taxes. And in that process, everybody's voice was heard. A unanimous GST framework was finalized. After all, there were six Congress governments in that. There were two communist governments. There was the West Bengal and Delhi government. So everybody has worked together to prepare this framework. Certainly, after three months of experience, one will take stock of the situation. If there's need to repair or improve on it. Yeah. This is a government which has always engaged with all stakeholders and is continuously looking for improvement. On your second question of two, as you call it, shocks, I think they were both essential to happen in order to turn the informal economy into the formal economy. Demonetization gave a strong message, a message that black money and informal transactions are not good for the country. But the benefits of demonetization are still not 100% clear to everyone. Because a lot of the black money may not come be back. clear. A lot of people were able to launder it. Vikram may not be clear to some people, but the people of India have understood that finally now there's a traceability to that 15 lakh crores. People of India have understood that 2 lakh companies yeah. are now identified for further scrutiny. Not to say that every one of those 2 lakh may necessarily be uh, in the dock. But at least now we've got an opportunity to identify who are the people who are holding cash? Who are the people who are laundering cash? Who are the people who are not declaring their accounts correctly? I think it's a huge thing that we've now been able to identify who is the person holding that money. A lot of them will have to answer. Many who, have, who are not able to answer will have to pay their taxes on that money. I think it's a very significant success and more importantly, the mindset change, the message that let's now go for the honest, clean, formal economy. You know, one of the other areas, if you are trying to analyze what could be yielding the Indian economy, it's obviously GST demonetization has been spoken about. Also, high interest rates and somewhat linked is the question of high NPAs, which is preventing private sector investment from taking place. You would be very well aware, aware of what is the status well, of Well, both this. of these are issues that uh, in some sense are legacy and in some sense are beyond our control. But the RBI is not seem, doesn't seem to be listening to you on lowering interest rates because they are saying inflation is That's a question concern. best put to the RBI. Yeah. But uh, this is legacy. After all, not one rupee of those loans were sanctioned during the NDA or uh, Mr. Modi's government. These are all loans largely sanctioned in the 2007, 8 to 14 period. Many of them evergreened on 
day should after day again and again. But there's something should be done about them? And will you keep on trying to talk to the RBI about the interest Of rate? course. Our government is always engaging with all schools of thought and with our regulators. Uh, it's a legacy we inherited. We, we were the government willing to bite the bullet. We were the government willing to clean up the system. Interest rates were pretty high. They've already fallen more than 200 basis points. By and large, for good companies today, money is available at very competitive prices. Right. You know, on the last question on the economy, these are some of these factors that you're saying are RBI hands or somebody else's hands. One of the things that you could do something more about are the, some of the compliance burdens, the effort of filing many papers. Even with GST, that's what people are saying. Concerns about Inspector Raj, concerns about tax terrorism. I remember interviewing you just before the government took over. Yes. And you very clearly said that the biggest problem which is facing the Indian economy is tax terrorism. And when we take over, we will do something about it. Now, three years have passed and it's still not clear that that has been entirely settled. In fact, with GST, some people are saying the compliance burden has gone up. It's the learning burden has gone up in GST. Compliance is not going to be a burden at all because as I said earlier in my uh, interviews in many channels that basically you have to record your sales transaction. The rest is by and large going to get auto-populated. But there's a learning curve. People have to get used to it. And certainly as a government, we are conscious that we'll have to handhold people, be liberal till such time as more and more people get to understand the system. You will appreciate after all the officials also are new to this. The whole, whole story is new to everybody, you, me, officials and the traders. So we are very conscious of that. Nobody has been harassed on the GST front. No penal provisions, no penal action has been invoked on anybody at all. As regards tax terrorism, are you aware that 99% of all income tax returns, and you know the income tax returns have grown by 50% in the short span of time. After all, all of these people were not paying taxes earlier. 99% income tax returns are cleared electronically without a question asked. Right. Did that ever happen before? And there are instances where certain information comes to our knowledge. For example, if you get information about a company which is a shell company or a money laundering company through which money is being trans transacted and is being brought into somebody's company. God forbid a shell company was to have put in 100 crores into your account. Yeah. Now, would we not like to... Would, no, it, would a, we not be obliged somebody to ask you a wrong. question? Somebody who's doing something wrong must be so, stopped. So it's a mispropaganda, Vikram. After all, uh, anybody who's had an issue with the tax department and has been able to show that his books are absolutely clean, then obviously the tax department just, walks out of just wanted to But what your... if the person says that, no, I've done so many hundred crores of tax evasion, I'm willing to pay taxes then I think you can't call it in any form of tax terror. Okay, let me just shift focus because I know you have to leave us on, on to your ministry. And in particular, the railways. Now, you've just taken over the railways, which is, you know, always a, a, a challenge. The first question you must have been confronted with is, we are investing so much money in a bullet train. And is that a slightly grandiose thing to do at a time when basic infrastructure is lacking, safety is still a problem, normal day-to-day -day travel is, a, is an issue, and we're spending so much money on one road between Ahmedabad and Mumbai. First of all, the money that is available for the bullet train is entirely different from the money that's going into safety. Let's be very clear about that. It's not as if because the money, some part of the money is being spent in bullet train, safety has to be compromised. I've made it loud and clear that there is no limitation of funds in the Indian railways, particularly for safety. So safety will get the highest priority. You may be aware that only recently I made some major decisions related to it safety. It was shocking what happened at Elton's. It's a very, very unfortunate thing. It pains me to see the kind of legacy that I've inherited over decades and decades of negligence. After all, an illustrious former finance minister was making a lot of noise about it. I was going through the amount of money he had provided for safety in railways. It was a pittance. Was Why was all this? Now, no doubt. No, 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 I'm talking about uh, illustrious uh, finance ministers oh, from the opposition. I'm trying to figure out which finance minister you're uh, talking about. Many of them have been making comments. In I was talking things. about the gentleman from the opposition. Okay, Mr. Chidamram. And uh, I was It's not very clear numbers. what the opposition is right now. Is it Mr. Chidamram? Is it Yashwan Sinha? Is it Arun Shori? A lot of opposition. A lot of, lot of constructive ideas that come up from different people. 
even from you, Vikram, we take with very serious thought and address yeah. those issues whenever they come up. So, if you're in but the yeah. important point to note is the kind of decisions we've taken. We've put foot over bridges, platforms, entry exit points also as safety. Okay. Something which never happened in a hundred years. I've diverted all available track to track renewal to give priority to safety. I've given powers to all general managers, unlimited but money then, available. But the, but the sum of funds is limited. So Not maybe we could have asked the who, Japanese who, to say, let's build metros and improve safety or other stuff. Or would they have only given Just money? by the way, uh, to get an investment into metro is costlier than an investment into a bullet train for your kind information. However, let me ask you a question. Do you want to keep the Indian consumer perpetually using an outdated old technology in some sense also adding to the unsafe uh, travel or would you rather that we engage with new technologies the last modern train that came into india was in 1969 but do you think the bullet train the bullet train has come after 50 years of the Radha. but can we then expand the bullet train to other parts of, of the country course. not just mumbai and ahmedabad there's Will always you get a mumbai beginning. to delhi delhi to kolkata Vikram, there's always a beginning this is a first train it's got finance at almost zero interest cost. This will help us get technology. They have committed to give us technology along with that. That technology will help us to make in India. And with that, at affordable prices, we okay. can expand bullet train, newer I, technologies across the country. I know they're trying to pull you away. So before you go, last very quick question. Are we doing the simultaneous election next year or is it just an idea? I don't know. It's a thought which your government has been pushing forward. Yeah, we do believe that there should be simultaneous elections. But it will ultimately have to be done in consensus with all political parties and in a manner that is transparent and known to the people when they are going into the election.